the gospel of Jesus Christ is the only power for true change because it's the only power that actually changes people. Amen. Wow. Everybody pray out loud with me because people are going to be saved and healed and set free tonight. Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. Thank you for dying for me. Thank you for dying for me. Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus, you can have my life. Lord Jesus, King Jesus, you reign. You reign. You, you, you are my God. It's about 7.30 in the morning. We're about to meet with Pastor Steve and his youth group here at Hailthorpe Community Church. Uh, we're gonna pack the car, we're gonna say a prayer, and then we're gonna go to creation. Creation is arguably the biggest moment of the year for contemporary Christian music fans. Every summer, thousands of young Christians travel from all over the country to celebrate their faith through music. Pastor Steve is 25 and has been the youth pastor at Hailthorpe for almost three years. He's been going to creation for almost a decade, and this year he invited me along. Hey, Good morning. What's up? What's up, man? Good morning. How are you? Good. How you doing? Ready to roll. Yeah. Ready. Um, you need a hand with anything? Yeah, actually, we uh, we made our own corn holes for this year. This scene was strangely familiar because I grew up in Western Iowa in a small non-denominational church similar to this one. As a kid, I had a strong relationship with Jesus and even felt called by God to become a youth minister. But ultimately, I turned away from my faith altogether. Believers call this a fall from grace. Are you excited for the festival? Yeah. Yeah, yeah you go into the front gate, it looks like Christian Woodstock everywhere. There's tents yeah. everywhere and porta potties everywhere and yeah, the yeah. big, huge stages. And... It is the future generation yeah. going yeah, yeah. up there. Yeah. Guys, it's going to be a good week. We're real excited. <laughs> Pastor Greg? Hey, let's pray. Heavenly Father, we're excited again for another year for creation. And we pray for safety. Um, we also would pray, Lord, that you who control the weather, that you might hold off on the rain there. Lord, just make this a very memorable event, and uh, we will give you the praise in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 You guys be safe up there. I'm sure everybody has already said it's Christian Woodstock, but it, it's Christian Woodstock. You don't quite feel complete until you're back there. and It's time to get rid of all the stress of work and everything. We went to Creation for the first time in 2008, and Switchfoot played Dare You to Move, and I just felt the presence of God just completely come over me. Do you feel pressure with like having so many kids who look up to you? At times, but so many speakers and preachers preach that, you know, time's coming to an end, you know, Christ is coming soon. And that's where I feel the pressure, is that I need to get these kids in here. I need to get them to hear God's word. You know, when you can use music to get the kids into the building, the Holy Spirit will do the rest. At least in my perspective, it feels a lot more like an opportunity for believers to come together and just say, okay, this is, this is reset. This is getting back to the heart of things. This is spending a week doing nothing but literally worshiping our creator through the different styles of music that speak to us. We're gonna worship together. We're gonna headbang together. We're gonna cry together. We're gonna study God's word together and we're gonna, we're gonna be a family. Um, do you mind hopping out and doing the tickets and vehicle passes now? Yeah, I'll do that right now. Each person needs a ticket. Okay. Here you go, guys. Oh, hey, Eric. Um, Got it. <laughs> then how many do you need? Hey, him? Eric, I need my camping. I need my parking pass, too. <laughs> I forgot mine. Oh, I got my ticket. All right, we're, you guys need this, too, right? Uh, you didn't? Pass? Yeah, we do. Yeah, all right. We handed out the tickets. 
Um, yeah, I'll have some veggies. Thanks, guys. I saw the light, I saw the light No more in darkness, no more in night Now I'm so happy, no sorrow inside Praise the Lord, I saw the light 2016, being a disciple of Jesus Christ rocks. It's the best time to be one. I just love all the great bands that are here and uh, hanging out at the campsite with everybody. Just kind of like unplug from the world and just plug back into God. Philippians 4.13 says, I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. Creation is definitely a time to just sit back and let God's love wash over you. So. I saw the light, I saw the light, no more in darkness, no more in night. Creation has been happening annually for nearly four decades and really is just as much church camp as it is music festival. Every year, over 60 Christian acts perform throughout the week. The 50,000 people who attended this year came to the farm not only to enjoy their favorite music, but to grow their faith in Jesus Christ. All right, Dave. Yes, sir. Want to open our devotional time and some prayer before I pass out our books here? Of course. All right, let's do it. Father, I pray tonight that you just open our hearts and minds so that we can actually talk about stuff that's relevant. We love you. It's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. All right, so uh, number one is, what are you looking to get out of Creation Northeast? Rejuvenation, man. It's been a long, stressful year. A lot of pain, a lot of heartache. Zach? I really want to learn new things that I didn't know about God before. I'm really excited because there's such a variety of bands this year. And the opportunity to experience that part of Christian worship alongside with just the huge community of believers here, I'm, I'm excited. I just needed this vacation away. And it's, it's going to be awesome, I already know it. Everyone is just so open. So it's very nice just to, hey, how you doing? Not have to explain why I'm in a wheelchair unless they really want to know. It's my prayer that when we come home from creation, you are changed. And, you know, not just for a season in your life, but forever, so that our group continues to grow each and every year and just get ready to experience a week that you won't soon forget. God knew you were going to come this year. And my friends, he has something special ready for each of you. So get ready with an open heart, open mind, and ears ready to hear what's going to be an amazing week. While the Christian music industry may be massive, it keeps itself isolated from mainstream pop culture. The headliner on the first night was Grammy award-winning pop duo for King & Country, whose last single clocked nearly 11 million plays on YouTube. I quickly learned to call them the Christian Coldplay. Swagger. 
thinking about it from a Christian perspective, are you guys writing songs that happen to be Christian, or are you attempting to minister to people with the music that you make? People say all the time that come to uh, concerts, they say, hey, you know, your, your show is like coming to a worship service. And I always find that very intriguing because, you know, we find ourselves writing these songs about topics that, you know, we wouldn't necessarily think of as worshipful, but they have hopefully a worshipful mindset. You guys are one of the groups who are kind of knocking on the door of mainstream music. What are your viewpoints on this stereotype that maybe Christian music is considered subpar from other music? Hmm. When you go to a church and somebody gets up there and plays a song, most of the time what you're going to have is you're going to have somebody go, man, you did good, man. And it could be awful. Yeah. And so what I think sometimes within the church, we feel like we actually have to say all nice things. Be slightly untruthful. It all gets to where if the message is good, it's good enough. And to me, the message we get to share is the greatest message of all. So why not have it be the best art? That way, ho hopefully, people, people see Jesus in it. That's the, the ultimate hope. And I think to add to that and to your point, the, the arts throughout history, but I think particularly in the modern era, can and, and will have the ability to reshape culture. The whole idea of art is that it has the ability to bypass the head and go straight to the heart, which is wonderful and incredibly frightening at the same time. Mm. Because it can almost subconsciously, it can play to your subconscious, which is so often so much more power than your actual conscious sense of yourself, you know? So it's monumental. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. T'was blind, but now I see. I don't know, some people feel weird about this phrase, but when did you get saved or when did that happen? I had always walked the path with God and I always worshiped and I always believed and he was always significant in my life. But I didn't actually let him in until I was 14, until, until my brother passed away. I told myself after that, that even though I wanted to kill myself, I couldn't because I couldn't make my mom go through that a second time. Um, but the comfort is that God has the plan. And you know, and I didn't get when all this stuff is happening, but there's a plan for it. And I've had a lot of people who, who aren't Christians ask me, well, all this has happened to you, how, how can you believe in God? And my answer is, how can I not? But I think music is, is so incredibly important to our faith in, in multiple different ways. Christian music goes a lot farther than, than just worship, and a lot of people miss that. Mm. Not all Christian music is Jesus, down your throat. <laughs> it's great. It's not everything. Um, you have the music where the purpose behind it is to remind people, you know, these are my demons, and, and they exist, mm. and they are real, yeah. and they are painful, and they are dark, and they are huge, mm -hmm. but they can't eclipse God. And you see, that's a big part of the Christian realm of music that a lot of traditional Christians don't accept as honoring Christ, which is one of the most frustrating things in the world. Yeah. Because um, this is the music that gets so much of us, so many of us through it all. Creation started in 1979 during the Jesus Movement, a mini spiritual revival that introduced modern music into Christianity. Good morning.
morning creation. Thank you, Harry. Can we just give a big hand to Pastor Harry? He is so awesome. Harry, it was his vision that started this festival so many years ago. I, I had been a pastor and felt led to get uh, music out to young people that was coming out of what we called the Jesus movement. Think about what Jesus said. Former hippies and, and druggies and you know, people that, that had pursued a, a different lifestyle as the 70s produced, and they became what they called Jesus freaks. But the church at that time was not accepting of this at all. So I had had a, a brief encounter where I was in prayer. Uh, I was driving through New York City and felt led to pull over. When I pulled over, I just bowed my head to pray. I, I saw a vision of like thousands of young people you know, and that's how it started. We really created the festival to have people come to Christ. We want people to experience what it's like to have God in your life and to walk with Him. We didn't feel that the type of evangelism that was going on really reached young people, mm -hmm. um, and that's why we incorporated the music and everything, whether it's rap or hip hop or it's heavy metal or whatever, it's communicating the truth of the gospel to the next generation. You know, something I struggled with and why I ended up leaving the church was, you know, God preaches compassion and loving and, and all of these different things that the Bible says. Why, in your opinion, do you think God allows people to go to hell? Oh, that's a big question. <laughs> yes. yes. Yeah, I'll ask him someday. <laughs> no, um, God is loving. We know that. Mm -hmm. In fact, the scripture says God is love. And unfortunately, when we willfully choose to walk away from God, mm -hmm. turn our back on Him, then we fall into the hands of what the scripture talks about, an angry God. Mm -hmm. In other words, you have chosen to refuse my love. So, you know, I don't, I got to separate the sheep from the goats now. Mm -hmm. And the sheep know my voice and they're going to be with me. He didn't come to condemn people. Mm -hmm. God's purpose is still the same. He's the father that loves the prodigal. And when he returns to him, he embraces him and says, let's throw a party. Mm -hmm. Creation offers a lot of opportunities throughout the week for Christians to recommit their lives to Jesus Christ, culminating in the group baptism led by Pastor Harry. of God was preceded by an extraordinary act of obedience. This week, while you're here and you hear sermons preached and you hear songs sung, I want to tell you it's about being obedient. It's not about your storm. It's not about your valley. It's not about how you feel. It's not about your fear. It's about being obedient to a living and loving God because he has the best thing in store for you and for your life. Would you value As Pastor Harry said, the goal of creation is to bring people to Christ. There are speakers throughout the week teaching conservative evangelical values and evidence for the existence of God. We're backstage right now listening to Rice Brooks. Uh, he wrote a really famous book called God's Not Dead that was then turned into a movie. Uh, and literally the entire festival is here to hear him speak. Stephen Hawking says because there's a law like gravity, the universe can and will create itself out of nothing. And so if you want to get logical when people say, well, the Christian faith isn't logical, well, let me just give you a little basic 101 syllogism. This is logic. Premise one, everything that begins to exist has a cause. Premise two, the universe began to exist. And if this is deductive logic, that means if the, if the premises are true, the conclusion automatically follows 
Therefore, the universe has a cause. But the arguments and the evidence for God will save your life, especially when, you attack, when that virus of skepticism strikes your child, it strikes you. And so this is not just a moment to have a little summer youth group commitment and then go back to reality. This is the time to make a decision that lasts forever. So this is your first creation. Your first creation? Uh, yeah, so I'm not really an outdoors person. <laughs> We, I was talking about it with my mom. She was saying, you know, it's probably not your thing. I had to tell her, I'm like, Mom, please, please just let me do this once. And she let me go. And honestly, it's been amazing. You get to meet new people, make new friends, and to just, you know, learn about Jesus. And that's what really this is all about. Yeah. You guys want to get a shirt together? Are there any of these that you guys like? Or? <laughs> Haters can't stop me. That one's sick. So we got like fit for a king. The Lord is my shield with like kind of a Captain America shield, but it's a cross. They make you sign up for like at every single stand here. Uh, you got to fill in on all your contact information. So you can sign up to win a free copy of the book. You can sign up to win a t-shirt. You can sign up to go to college. You can do whatever, and they get all your contact information. What's up? It just said customize your own t-shirt. Oh, customize your own t-shirt? Yeah. Andy Minio is currently on stage. He's sound checking for his performance. He's probably one of the biggest rappers right now, one of the biggest Christian rappers right now, but he doesn't really like the label of Christian rapper. He's just a rapper who's Christian. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right now, hold up. Check, check. Do do Chris do any like rappers in the Chris do any artists in the Christian world smoke weed? <laughs> do they? I'm pretty sure. <laughs> I mean, Christians creating art in a world where not everybody is a Christian, right? Mm -hmm. Like, how do those things exist together? And that's been a conversation for a really long time. Mm -hmm. The Bible says, like, be in the world and not be of it. Mm -hmm. So what does that mean? You know what I'm saying? To be in the world but not be of it. I think it means to exist in spaces where people don't think or act or worship or pray like you do, and to still exist in those spaces in ways where you engage with people and shine the light mm -hmm. that God has put inside you. But I think sometimes Christian culture can become like separatist because they're fearful of um, being overtaken by the temptations of the world. And it kind of sterilizes Christian faith. I don't know if you know like the history of like Christian contemporary music, but it was kind of like created. Cause like, I think Christians want to have stuff that helps encourage them in their journey, like their spiritual journeys, right? And so you're like, I want to ingest or read or listen to things that are going to encourage me in my spiritual journey. But at the same time, it can be very like limiting because we think that the idea of if something is Christian, that it equals suitable for all ages, and it's just not true. Mm -hmm. You yeah. know what I mean? Um, and I think that's like the sterilization in order to market to a particular audience and this like Ned Flanders idea of Christianity. Sure. Right. And I think if you force a standard onto art, like you have to do these things in order to be accepted by us or to be played on our radio stations, mm -hmm stuff like that. I think that's the, like prostituting art. Uh, it turns art into propaganda instead of a like honest expression. And so that's why I don't use that title for myself. And um, I think the tension that's there is like, when I say, yo, I don't call myself a Christian rapper. I just call myself an artist and I'm a Christian.
Father, I pray this morning that in our worship today, when we're in collective place tonight and our Irish shin digging tonight, that you will be praised. God, you are just so amazing. We thank you so much for this week. Amen. We're gonna do lunch at about one o'clock. We're gonna do, uh, we got some cheddar smoked sausages. I'm gonna do burgers. Um, we've got some shrimp left over. So leftover surprise, we're gonna do bacon cheeseburgers for lunch. Bacon wrapped shrimp. Bacon shrimp. I knew I married you for a reason. <laughs> <laughs> Can I get another Stromboli, please? I would like one as well. I got you, don't worry about it. All right, man, thank you. Don't worry about it. Appreciate it. All right. This thing's good. <laughs> this is my second one today. I will have a third before the end of the day, I guarantee it. <laughs> I got saved. Yeah. You know, quote unquote, um, about the age of 14. Mm -hmm. Growing up, you know, in public school and whatnot, you just, as a teenager, you just kind of, you screw up. Mm -hmm. I end up really, you know, nose diving, getting into some drugs and all that, drinking, uh, got in contact with my, my old youth pastors. That's why I started meeting more people that ended up getting me into the metal scene. It spoke to me, you know. The whole mosh pit scene is all, it's just a bunch of guys thrashing around, pushing each other around and all that. And I was like, this is it. This is my spot. This is where I need to be. This is where I feel God's calling me to this moment. Because when someone falls down, boom, you jump out. You get a hold of them and everything. In those moments, for some reason, I'm able to just communicate yeah. and get it out. It all clicks in their heads when it's happening. It's kind of funny you know, from an outsider perspective, imagining like a bunch of like people coming together and moshing and like kind of beating the hell out of each other, but that being a form of worship. Yeah, it is crazy. Yeah. You know, what in this world isn't? This is my third year here at Creation Festival, and uh, I just love it. It's acknowledging that there's people around you who need Jesus as much as you do. You know, you come out here, you enjoy the event, but it's more than just the event. It, it's, it's a common ground, it's uh, similar hearts. The way that they talk about God through rap, I just think it's amazing. Once I came here and started listening to the music they had, and these past few days, like, I've actually been like thinking about like my whole life and how I want to turn it around just because of those musics. I believe that God really uses these types of festivals to reach people. He loves us, but he wants us to love him in return. I believe that there is a God and he loves me, but I've been, I've been broken by this life. I'm about to go see this hardcore band named Sleeping Giant playing the Fringe stage. Jason was talking about how moshing is a form of worship. I don't know what's gonna happen. It's gonna like punch some guy and then say praise Jesus. This song is for anybody who truly believes Matthew 25 40. This song is called Finished People. <laughs> Everyone bounce, let's go! Jesus together. Are you guys ready?
I wished I could explain to the friends I'd made why I could no longer believe the way that they did. But I also remembered a part of myself that I'd abandoned. I longed for the familiarity of the life I once lived and the comfort that Christianity can provide. These people loved God, and they felt they needed to in order to survive. It's up to you to light the candle of the person next to you. So tonight, what I'd like for you to do as you light the candle next to you is for you to say, Jesus loves you. Jesus Wonderful. loves you. What takes Thank place? You Just well. simply that. Jesus loves you. But Jesus also taught his disciples something. Though he was the true light that enlightens every man, he wanted them to know that it's time now for them to be a light in this world. We have a light in our hand. But you have something far more powerful inside of you, if you know Jesus. Jesus is the light of the world, and you're a light in this world, not by your own power, but by the power of God's Holy Spirit. And we pray in the name of Jesus, that you will be that light because this world needs that light desperately. But we remember, the darkness in the world cannot overpower the light that is in you, Jesus Christ. And if God is before us, who can be against us? Lift that light up to heaven and say with me, Jesus, I know you're the light of the world. And I know you love me. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. Fill me to overflowing. And let that light shine. And immerse me in your power. In Jesus' name, amen. I'm so glad you're here. God bless you. I saw the light, I saw the light. No more in darkness, no more in night. Now I'm so happy, no sorrow inside. Praise the Lord, I saw the light.